I think the goal is to make sure that when you're making big macro level business decisions, you have data to inform that. Welcome to Unlocking Big Data, a series about getting trusted data to healthcare professionals presented by HIMSS. HIMSS Market Insights conducted research on data analytics platforms in December 2022 to early January 2023 to understand satisfaction with current analytics platforms or solutions, integration of applications and technologies with data analytics platforms, challenges encountered with investments in analytic platforms and upgrades, and reliability and use of analytics data. 55 executives, IT, technology, and clinicians participated in the research. Throughout the series, we'll present key data points from the research and focus on why these data points are important and how you can leverage these findings to support your healthcare organization's data initiatives. In our fourth episode, we'll look at leveraging more data for intelligent business decision-making. I'm joined by Isaiah Nathaniel, CP Hims, Vice President and CIO of Delaware Valley Community Health, Inc., and Jay Kochberg, Vice President of Analytics and Chief Analytics Officer at Arcadia, who will help us explore key takeaways from the research. Welcome, Isaiah and Jake. Thanks for joining me today. Let's talk about how healthcare organizations, regardless of type, can increase the percentage of data to make intelligent business decisions. So let me start with this question. Only 57% of an organization's data is being used to make intelligent business decisions. Why is it such a low percentage? To very quickly answer the question, I think there's a multitude of reasons why only 57% use the data. I think the first issue is trust. We don't trust the data that's coming out of systems. We have so many desperate systems in all of our organizations. System A may be telling you one set of information. System B is telling you a totally different set, and the criteria is the same. So I think that's the first issue. I think the second issue is we don't ask enough information. We only require the minimum set of data. And when you do that, you're only getting partial of the story. And then I think lastly, we don't ask hard questions. If we ask the hard questions, I think then we would get the true whole picture of what we want the data to say. Jake, did you want to add to that? I think it's a really good comment about asking the right questions of the data and asking the hard questions of the data. I think one of the major challenges is that people are using so many different systems that are built with different nuances to the way they're aggregating the data, normalizing the data, to a point where you're asking two systems the same question and getting different answers. And that's where distrust comes from. Mm -hmm. So to me, I think 57% is too low and we can get higher. But one of the major things is a better investment in understanding how to make sure that when you are using multiple systems, you understand why they're different rather than thinking that the data is wrong in either system. So is it just that the data is siloed or is it that it's actually just not being collected properly? It's probably a bit of both. I think on the ground, there's probably some level of miscollection or codes being used in healthcare systems that are not being tracked in a way on the ground that is what you would need for clean data. Most of the data is still probably accurate. There's some where the underlying data is inaccurate, but the biggest issue is different systems are getting data from different places. And then it, when you're aggregating it, normalizing it, and turning it into a, a data point, a metric, a KPI, there's some nuance that goes into that. And even the same metric can be calculated differently. So we're at 57% of the data being useful now or being used now. Is 100% attainable? Is this something we even want to get to? Or what is realistic? I think from my perspective, being a vice president, chief information officer, data is at the core of my job. So I'm always going to say 100% of data is usable and should be usable and actually actionable. But is that true? No, I think it's a far stretching, reaching goal to get to 100%. If I were to put my analytics cap on, I would say that organizations really can set a standard between 72 to 77%. So the data that came out, the research said it's 57%. So if we really say that we can get to that 72%, 77%, how do we make that 20% jump? I think 10% comes from actually asking more required fields of your customers, your patients, your acquisition strategy. And I think the other 10% is actually your employees. So I think we need to look at both your employees and your customer data to tell the real true picture. So is it more structured than unstructured that we're looking for? You know, if you said we need more fields? I think the fields are there from a technologist. You're, you're listening to a technologist. So I'm going to say my field is the best field ever. Right. 
Um, so I think the actual fields are there. I think we don't require them. I think we say, okay, you can give me name, date of birth, uh, phone number, and email address, and you can pass through our system. We're not asking for all of the specific pieces of information. And then particularly in healthcare, we're not asking all of the qualifying information to make sure that, that once you get to the provider at the point of care, the data is actually actionable. So I think that's part of the issue here is that we're just trying to get people time to provider really quickly to that seven minutes to a primary care doc or 11 minutes to a subspecialty. But we're not really trying to capture the actionable data that once they get there, the doctor can perform their services appropriately. Interesting. So that, that, that comment was a lot about like the point of care data collection, getting it to the primary care providers. I think a lot of the gap is that next level up too, where there's a lack of data use and intelligent decision making from more of an aggregate macro level, especially when we're talking about health systems and IDNs. So I think it's attainable to jump up. I agree. I don't think 100% is achievable, and I'm not even sure that's the right goal. I think the goal is to make sure that when you're making big macro level business decisions, you have data to inform that. And I think that is achievable through better collection at the point of care better investment in making sure that you have data platforms that you can aggregate your data together and really tell a story with that data, and then investment in the right resources to tell those stories as well. That's something that I think the Hims research showed as well is uh, investment in analytics resources to, to analyze that data uh, is a challenge in the current environment. So what does leadership have to do throughout the organization to help bring that up? Yeah, I think, I think the big thing is top-down culture of being data-driven. I think it's with the, the organization I started my career at, there was very little data being used when I arrived. We were mostly working in Excel spreadsheets, and there was not really data being used in any formal uh, business decision-making. So something that evolved over time was we built out an analytics team. We invested in a data platform. We started to prove the value of data and strong analytics. Once we did that, there became kind of a top-down initiative that we weren't going to start new programs. We weren't going to start new initiatives without data informing that. We got into a culture of people going to the analytics team for requests when they needed something new and using real reporting to track outcomes after we started any program. Isaiah, you're working in the industry. What are the challenges you're seeing in terms of getting leadership to, to help drive up the amount of data we're using? Yeah, I think it's a very good question because I actually agree with some of the things that you said and, and, and just bringing it all together, bringing it back to home base here, I think that it does have to start at the top. I think that one of the things that we have to do as leadership is to get out of our gut. A lot of us in leadership, we go with the gut. We, ah, oh, that data doesn't make sense. That data, we don't trust it because we don't really have the source of truth. To We don't have the platform for sources of truth. All of the KPIs, you can get it individually, but how do you really put it at the, the necessary spaces that you need to. So I think starting it as an organizational goal, and then I think data and operability and system framework platform across your network should be something that is doable, actionable, and put into place. And then lastly, I think transparency is a big key. I think you have to be transparent with the data. You have to say whatever the data suggests is what we're going to put out and then make an action plan towards whatever the actual data says without judgment. And that's all we have time for today. I would like to thank our guests, Isaiah Nathaniel and Jake Hotchberg, for their perspectives. And be sure to check out the other episodes in this series, as well as our companion podcast. For HIMSS, this is Michael Krieger. <laughs>